So welcome everybody to the next edition of Transportation Insights. Uh, today we're so lucky to have Pierre Genau uh, with us today. Uh, welcome Pierre. Hi Thomas, it's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. So today we're going to, to speak about uh, building greener supply chains. So Pierre, can you uh, make a quick introduction about yourself? Sure, yeah. So first of all, thank you so much for having me on this uh, on this uh, transportation series. It's it's uh, it's really good to be here. Um, so my name is Pierre. I'm the co-founder at Sea Roots. We're a company that's established in Marseille in uh, Hamburg. And the whole premise of the company is to help make supply chain greener. So the topic is right on spot for us. Um, with uh, so the company is about 18 months old now. Um, we got a pretty nice uh, small team, but mainly R&D engineers, uh, with PhD backgrounds like myself. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited to tell you all about what we do. Excellent. So approximately 8% of global CO2 emissions uh, come from transportation of goods today. So when we, when we speak to customers, we've seen you know, a bit of a change in terms of how they think about their CO2 footprint. Uh, can you tell me uh, you know, a bit about your your vision with with C routes? Yeah, it's it's amazing that you're starting with this number. Um, actually, depending on what report you're looking at, the, um, so the European Union has put a, uh, a, a couple of studies on this, uh, and one study that's striking is that that number eight huh, percent, which is already really high, could go up to a third of all CO2 emissions uh, coming from transport in 2050. So it's a, it's a huge number, and this is in the case where nobody does anything. Um, the European Union doesn't put any pressure, or there's no regulation. Shippers are not taking any actions. Carriers are not doing anything. Um, and so that's why you're seeing initiatives like the Green Deal, for instance, where um, the European Union is trying to reduce these emissions by 90% by 2030, so that we don't get that figure of a third of all CO2 emissions coming from transport. So, um, yeah, that's that's huge. And so obviously this is pushing companies, in particular shippers, to come up with tactics to reduce their uh, CO2 emissions. And so not just CO2, uh, but greenhouse gases in general. Um, and so the, the real question is, what can shippers do? What are the tactics? And uh, um, so before i even address that question i think there is another thing that's interesting to look at it's on one side there is the regulatory pressure so the legal is is definitely pushing but on the other side you have the consumers uh, consumers of big shippers uh, from you know from sporting companies from uh, furnishing companies uh, um, they're also pressuring these consumers to buy green today they want a pair of sneakers that um is is zero emissions they want to buy uh, tables that are made of recycled woods and also have had no impact on, on climate um, and so shippers really have these two pressure points the consumers on one side and the legal on one side and these two pressure points are going in the same direction which which is right um, so the next question is what can they do about it now mm -hmm. um, so um, i can tell you what we would like them to do um, so it's at it's yeah, so, basically we've yeah go ahead and so uh, you know companies that, that we uh, that we uh, that we work with uh, some of them uh, you know they also make very bold statements um, in terms of what they plan to do uh, publicly so you know some of them they go out and they say you know our ambition is to reduce emission with for example 25% by 2025 uh, and then obviously when it comes to ocean freight and air freight, they also discussing, so how could they make decisions to choose certain providers that will enable them to, to reach these, these goals? Uh, you know, from your perspective, how, could, how would it be you know, possible to, to, to get data to support those decisions? And then over time to track the impact of the decisions. Is that you know, possible today? And, and what's what's your view on on this? Yeah, I think you're you're putting the finger exactly where it hurts. Um, so, giving giving uh, your clients the possibility to to choose or or to see uh, which service 
would reduce their CO2 footprint is definitely the right direction for them to reduce CO2 coming from transport. Um, there are several steps to this. The, the, the first step is they need to measure this correctly. That means at the end of a quarter or, or right when they just did um, a, a booking, um, look at exactly what the amount, what the CO2 was that was emitted during that particular transport. Um, so the, the first thing is measure accurately. And currently the, the different sources of data that you can get out there from different providers um, don't allow you to measure this accurately at the right level. And the key here is to be able to differentiate a service from a carrier. Um, so two different services between a port pair from a given carrier or to differentiate services across carriers. Um, that's, that's the end goal. So what data source you're asking do you need to be able to do that? Well, the essential one is um, maybe we can do a little reminder or refresher for everybody on CO2, but how, how does one measure CO2 that's coming from, let's say, sea freight? Well, you need um, a port pair, right? So you're, you're transporting containers on a vessel between two ports. Um, the, there are several factors, but the, the number one factor is um, what's the distance sailed by a particular vessel between that port pair. So in there, obviously vessels do different rotations. Um, they have different stops on route. So some of them have express services. And so distances vary considerably. And obviously the longer the distance, the more you're sailing, the more CO2 you emit. So distance is, is number one. The second is the speed at which you travel. Um, so you need to look into, you know, is your vessel transporting your, your containers traveling fast? or is it traveling slow? Um, yeah, that's basically the number two. And obviously the size of the vessel will matter. And then there's a, a, a lot of other factors that come into play. You know, you know if you, do you have weather on route? Uh, what's the state of your vessel? Um, is it reefer plugs? Or is, are you carrying dry stuff? Um, so there's lots of other things, but the main three ingredients are the real distance, the vessel speed, and, and obviously which vessel. So that's the data points you need um, to measure CO2 accurately. But isn't, isn't, um, isn't you know, the, the ocean kayak carriers, aren't they able to do this uh, today themselves? And then, um, so, you know, why, why would, you know, you need, anyone need a, a different company to, uh, to measure these things? Yeah, it's a very good question. So the, the different carriers have put in place an initiative called the Clean Cargo Working Group, which is a great initiative. And the idea is to put in place a standard so that everybody reports on CO2 in the same way. Um, mm. And so it's it's a great initiative. The, the problem with this is that what's being reported is an aggregated value per trade lane, per carrier. Um, so what you see is kind of a, a yearly aggregate of all the fuel consumption or, or CO2 emissions, and then how much they've sailed on that trade lane. So then this, this includes all the vessels on all the port pairs on a given trade lane. And so you don't have that information. So if you want service level CO2 emissions, carriers would need to be able to report accurately on the service level, even better on the vessel level between the port pair. And that becomes a difficult exercise um, First, they have that information, they could put it out there. Um, we, we just need to put in systems in place to be able to retrieve this from their systems uh, mm -hmm. accurately. So there's a little bit of software that needs to be built on this, but let's leave this aside. The second thing is if they put that data available for everybody to see, then I have information about how much fuel has a vessel of a particular fleet of a particular carrier consumed between a port pair. And that's sensitive information because uh, it carries the information of pricing in there. So, mm. And so I, I don't think we're gonna see the carriers give that granularity of data uh, anytime soon. Right, uh, it's interesting. So if, if, you know, if you look into the crystal ball, how does this market look like in you know, five to 10 years? Is there any you know, changes happening uh, not only you know from the ones buying and selling freight, but also from leg regulatory uh, authorities in, in this uh, in this in, in this on this topic. Yeah, so I have I have one which I would really like to see happen. Um, 
And it's going to be really easy to understand for uh, for shippers in particular when we make the analogy with um, schedules. Uh, today, uh, shippers, freight forwarders, but shippers make decisions um, to choose a service based on transit time. And so obviously they need goods A to B shipped in a given amount of time under price constraints, but they're very sensitive to this transit time question. And one thing that we saw happening is we saw a few companies starting to rate the carriers based on can they meet their announced transit time. And so you see things like a reliability index of the transit time. So, you know, um, one of the carriers will say we do New York, Shanghai in X amount of days and they're on spot 95% of the time. That's a really good company. So a shipper knows if I book that service, my goods will arrive on time. You know? And so that's, that's really good. What I think you'll see happening is the same thing with um, GHG uh, emissions. Um, so what you'll see is you'll have someone, maybe Sirius, computing an a priori CO2 value. So this service should emit X amount of CO2. So this is the announced value. And then a posteriori, because we have all these data points nowadays, we know where the vessel sails, we know um, what speed, uh, we know the exact loop uh, and so forth. We can measure the posteriori value. And we can actually compare, uh, was the promise made by, made by the carrier met? And how reliable is it? And you can do this across carriers. Um, and the same thing we're doing for reliability or transit time, you'll see on, on CO2 as well. And therefore, the big shippers that have CO2 targets and uh, want to you know, take actions to meet these, they'll have a tendency to go with carriers that are reliable in terms of uh, CO2 emissions as well. And so I think this is a really interesting direction where things will naturally evolve and probably the the, you know, the carbon accounting mechanisms that we we saw the uh, European Union is putting in place um, with, with carbon quotas will probably go in that direction. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, encouraging and, and exciting. And I think, you know, for for uh, for the ones buying freight and also the ones selling freight in the future to have transparency on emission, on on reliability and on price will potentially also help them to compete not only about the pricing but also on uh, on the qualitative aspect of uh, of the service so um any final words you'd like to to say before we before we end to end today yeah thomas i'm i'm really excited about the topic um i can only say um it's exciting because it's 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 a new topic. You see people moving really fast on the regulatory side, on the client side, the shippers, and companies like uh, like Sirius that are trying to bring this transparency. Um, so I'm only excited. There's no other word to see how this evolves and and um, and and how we can use this really to make better better decisions. Fantastic. So Pierre, thanks a lot for for spending time with us uh, today. Um, We'll definitely, you know, look further into how um, we potentially also could uh, could get access to some of the data that you um, that you have, because I know that there's love to. quite a bit of interest uh, from uh, from the shipper community when it comes to these things. So uh, so let's keep in touch on that. And I also would like to remind everybody of our customers that we have our customer summit coming up, 14th and 50th of uh, of October. So register. Uh, you'll find the link uh, on our website. And we hope to see as many as possible um, during these two days. So thanks again, Pierre, for taking the time. Yeah, with thank us you today. so much for having me, Thomas. Perfect. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.